Welcome back to the class on electrical vehicles and hybrid electrical vehicles. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the operation of the BLDC motor and the classification. Now, let me see the BLDC motor. The full form for the BLDC motor is a brushless DC motor. Actually, it is a AC motor only. It is consisting of stator winding as well as a rotor. On the rotor, permanent magnets are placed. But the stator is equipped with a Three phase winding which is displaced by 120 degrees. For that one, we are giving a three phase supply. Now we are going to see how operation of a BLDC motor. This is the rotor pole. On the rotor, we kept the permanent poles. On the stator, this is the three coils which are displaced by 120 degrees. The excitation given to the stator winding through the three phase inverter. H1, H2, H3 are the Hall effect sensors which are placed in the stator. The signals from the Hall effect sensors is given to the DSP controller. The main function of these Hall effect sensors are the it will give the information about the position of the rotor. Based upon that, the DSP controller generating a pulses through the three phase inverter. This inverter is giving a pulses to the stator winding of an induction motor where exactly the poles will be created from the stator winding. Suppose if it takes this is south pole, this is north pole of a rotor. Now this inverter is giving a voltage such a way that here south pole, here north pole will be created in the stator. So that there is attractive force between the north pole and south pole and north pole and south pole of a stator as well as a rotor. In this way, the torque and speed of a machine are controlled. Now come to the classification of a BLDC motor. The BLDC motor can be classified into two types based upon how we are going to keep the permanent magnets on a rotor and what is the nature of back EMF used in a stator wind, the rotor construction and stator EMF. If we come to the rotor construction, the surface mounted BLDC motor, interior mounted rotor type BLDC motor, the trapezoidal EMF waveform. BLDC motor, sinusoidal EMF wave form BLDC. Now we are going to see one by one the rotor construction of a BLDC motor. In case of a rotor construction of a BLDC motor, it is classified into two types. One is the surface mounted permanent magnet. Nothing but the permanent magnets are mounted on the surface. This is the rotor, this is the shaft. See here the permanent magnet, here north pole, south pole. Here one more magnet, here one more magnet, here one more magnet. They are skewed properly such a way that the cogging torque developed in a BLDC motor will be lesser. Main disadvantage of this type is that suppose if we run the BLDC motor at high speeds, there is a possibility of flying of this permanent magnets. Next one is the interior mounted permanent magnet rotor. So this is the rotor. Inside of a rotor, we kept the north poles. Here, one bar magnet, this is another magnet, this is another bar magnet, this is bar magnet. Nothing but we are assuming that in this rotor of a motor, we kept the four poles. See, main advantage of this one is that we can run this type of motor at high speeds. There no flying of the permanent magnets because the permanent magnets are placed inside of a rotor. One more disadvantage of this motor is that the inductance of a machine will be changes due to the placing of permanent magnets on a interior portion of the rotor. Next classification based upon the stator EMF. Basically, there are two types of BLDC motors are there based upon the stator EMF. One is the trapezoidal, another one is the sinusoidal. Suppose in the stator winding, what are the back EMF? Nothing but induced voltage in a stator winding. If it is a trapezoidal, then it is nothing but a trapezoidal. BLDC motor. So to induce the trapezoidal voltage in a stator winding, we have to do some sort of construction. Then only the trapezoidal voltage will be induced in a stator winding and the rotor is rotating. It has the following ideal characteristic. Rectangular distribution of magnetic flux in air gap. Next, rectangular current waveform and concentrated stator winding. In case of induction motor and alternator, we are distributing the winding, but in case of a BLDC motor for getting the trapezoidal back EMF waveform, 
we have to place the winding as a constant. This is the equivalent circuit. RA is nothing but a resistance of a one winding. LA is nothing but inductance of a A winding. EA is nothing but a back EMF induced in a phase A winding. What are the voltages we are giving to the stator of induction motor? It will creating the excitation nothing but a P. It will take a waveform of the quasi sphere wave with a displacement of 60 degrees electrically from zero current excitation in a cycle. The nature of excitation waveform for the trapezoidal back EMF permits some important system simplification when compared to the sinusoidal back EMF BLDC motor. The resolution required for the rotor position sensors are much lower since only six computation instances are necessary for the one electric cycle. Now here we are going to see the what is the waveform which is generated stator winding and stator current and signals of a all effect sensor. So this is the waveform of the voltage induced in a stator winding when the rotor is rotating. These are the current waveforms of a phase A. Same manner this back EMF will be displaced by another phase with a 120 degrees. This is the B phase. In the same manner it is the C phase. These are the signals coming from the all effect sensors which are placed in a stator of a BLDC motor. So what are the voltage we are showing here? Nothing but phase voltage. In case of a trapezoidal BLDC motor, what is the flux is crossing from the rotor through the air gap? That is crossing only in radial direction only. That's why we are getting the trapezoidal waveform. Moreover, the winding is the concentrated winding which is displaced by 120 degrees in a space. The coils of stator winding are positioned in a standard three phase full pitch concentrated arrangement thus the phase trapezoidal back emf waveform is displaced by 120 degrees electrical already we have seen the current waveform the current pulse generated is 120 degrees on and 60 degrees off within the off cycle in this manner it has happened for the both positive cycle as well as the negative cycle of the back emf waveform to drive the motor with a max drop, there should be a synchronization between the line current and back EMF voltage in each phase so that only we can generate a more amount of the torque per ampere of current. Sinusoidal shape back EMF PLDC motor. In this case, what are the EMF induced stator winding that is the sinusoidal voltage. In that manner, we are making the construction for the stator winding. In the stator, the winding is displaced in a sinusoidal manner. See, the displacement of a stator winding in a stator is a function of a sinusoidal. Here more number of con conductors are there, here less number of conductors are there. Nothing but this is 90 degrees, this is a 0 degree, this is 180 degree. The same manner here also. The sinusoidal distribution of magnetic flux in air gap, the sinusoidal current waveform, sinusoidal distribution of stator conductors also. What are the back EMF induced in a stator winding that is the sinusoidal? In that manner, we are making a construction for the stator winding in which we are placing the stator winding as a sinusoidal function. When the rotor is rotating, where we kept the permanent magnets. So the flux will be linking with a stator winding. So the sinusoidal voltage will be used. It also draws a sinusoidal current. The drive operation of sinusoidal shape back EMF PLDC motor is similar to the AC synchronous motor. This type of motor also we can analyze by means of a phasor diagram because the back EMF and MMF and current waveforms are the sinusoidal. So we have seen the how we are going to keep the stator winding in a stator of a BLDC motor to get the sinusoidal back EMF. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.